What's up? This is Chico Bean. Hey, I am Carlos Miller. And I'm DC Young Fly from the 85 South Show. Hey, when you're on the move and you can't check our show out on YouTube, you can still check us out on the Apple Podcast app, our Heart Radio app, or wherever you get your podcast. What about Spotify? Yep. Uh, Google Podcast? Absolutely. Alexa? Hell yeah. Hey, tune in every Friday. Listen and subscribe to the 85 South Show. <laughs> it only makes sense. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Hey, what's up? I'm Carlos Miller, and if you don't know by now, Blue Chew is where it's at. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within a few days. The best part? It's all done online. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all form of ED, erectile dysfunction. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than the pharmacy. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use promo code 85SOUTH at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com, promo code 85SOUTH to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. My name is Carlos Miller, and Blue Chew is the shit. You can make love to your lady for a long time, if you want to, because she gonna want you to. We need to, turn, hey, we need to flip the script, because we, you know how they be. We fuck around in YouTube. Been and goddamn took all the audio off this bitch because they say we don't have no rights to his music. He right here listening to it with us. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this, this next young man that we bring into the music scene, but it's J O N, Pink Do Rag. Just to let him know he got the courage. All the God Box stuff I own, though. Just so you yeah. Know, yeah, I own that one hundred percent. So that's what you feel. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, we know you do. <laughs> you, you the type of nigga who, when you got on, you ain't working for nobody. Man, fuck that. Man, first of all, welcome back to the '85 South Show. Now, yes. now, <laughs> we got a whole ass legend in here today. Thank you. I'm talking about. Come on. Mississippi. Come on. Yay! You feel? Come on. Jackson. But the whole Mississippi. Come on. I'm talking about, we got that fire water. You feel? Come on. I'm talking about kamikaze, you know. All the way I'm crooked talking letters. about crooked letters. I'm talking about Mr. Bad Table Manners. <laughs> I'm talking about Cadillacs on 22. Yeah. You feel me? I'm talking about Mississippi. The album. I'm talking about baptized in dirty Whoa. water. Talk that shit, I'm talking about. Come, girl. Try I'm to trying you. to get your pussy wet. <laughs> Work that. <laughs> Run, girl. I'm talking about real thug get down on, on the floor. floor. I'm All talking about floor. this man from my state. Come on. This I won. We ain't had one till he came along. Now we had some, but he is that one who brought us to the mother, who made them look at us and say, it's them kind of niggas down there. I'm talking about one of the most phenomenal feats of all time. I'm talking about Black Snake Moon. Oh, I'm talking talk, about man. one of the coldest oh, niggas to on. ever got them put them headphones on. Hey, Lee, when we go, when we go on tour this time, <laughs> in, any TV show I'm coming on, he starting this motherfucker. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Chevy Astro go. van with the motherfucking slide door, yep. with the studio in it, yep. with the Mac 10, I with the Uzi, with the Dust Eagle, with the Tech 9. This the nigga who showed hey, Timber Gun and made Tim say, man, what the fuck is that? Hey, just cause you said that, I got a, I got a present for you, bro. I brought this for you. David Bell! Come on, man. Come on, man. Only a nigga from oh, Mississippi oh, would have a pocket knife. Hey. This man! Hey. That, that's the knife from uh, Crocodile Dundee. That's, that's a knife. knife. Hold on one more time for you. That's a knife. That's it, bro. That's, that's for you. Sali, we got something else for you, bro. Stop playing. We got something for y'all, man, from ABV. 
First of all, even before we, we give all this, I let Sally. Sally is actually a designer for ABV. So all the clothes that you see. Y'all oh, saw him on the David Better podcast. He make all the clothes. Oh my. And I want y'all to see the bag, touch the bag, yeah. the whole nine. Okay. All that. Yeah. You know okay. what I'm saying? Put that down there in front, Lisa. They can look yeah, yeah, yeah he already. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so before we even start, y'all want to say something, man. I want to, I want to tell y'all how proud I am of what y'all created. Y'all created. My date banner knife. Oh right man, up. I appreciate it. <laughs> you gotta get that side. So. I, I, I created something. Y'all, you all created something for you. You know, and you created something for your friends that did the same thing. I've been watching y'all slowly, bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's just y'all. Doing y'all, doing the South, and I'm really, really proud of y'all, man, because the one thing that we never had properly was a movement. Mm. You know, one of the things that I told people, the reason why the West Coast took off the way that it did was because along with Snoop and Dre and all them, there was also menace to society. You know what I'm saying? It was also yeah. colors. So we never had everything to line up at the same time. But now with the comedians coming and we having that real Southern South comedian, because in a lot of cases, man, a lot of people look at the South as a caricature. You know, there's a real thin line between being real and then being exactly what the fuck people want you to be. You know what I'm mm. saying? That was one thing that I learned from Tip. Like Tip actually taught me that. He said, man, people are looking at us. We got a responsibility to hold ourselves a certain way. You know, that's why I sort of, for, after a while, I sort of cleaned myself up and stood up a certain kind of way. Because it, we don't want to end up being what they think we are. Yeah, we this. Yeah, we that. But we also, where most people who are black get educated. Mm. We're also the place where Elijah yeah. Muhammad is actually from. Cordell, Georgia. You know what yeah. I'm saying? These are the places where the real movement happened in Mississippi and South Carolina and Alabama, all these different places. So I decided, man, that it was my responsibility, bro, to give our children and give the South something to look for. Because I never forget when I first went on BET for the first time, they really thought that I was a stone cold fucking idiot. And when I got up there and started talking that shit and started talking about Emmett Till and knowledge self and all that kind of shit, but I was still crazy, high and smoked out. The motherfuckers didn't know how to act. And ever since then, every time something happened, they would call on me, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm really, really proud of y'all, man. And keep doing what y'all doing, bro. Hey, we will, we put, that's big. <laughs> That's real, bro. That's huge right there. And I, man, we ain't through with the gift, with the opening gifts and stuff like that. And you know I brought mine. I oh, shit. I wanted you to know that. Oh, this, come shit. On. This he I'm still got the crunchy shit, dog. <laughs> no. so, so, so let me tell y'all. I knew I was going to run into you. Let me tell y'all the dope shit about this. So this is actually what sold. My, my album did well. But what I did was I created they said that this was one of the greatest marketing schemes in hip hop ever. And it's crazy, when I was signing the big labels and shit, I would have these kind of marketing ideas and they would say, we can't do that. It was about seven of us did one of the greatest marketing. They said what was one of the greatest marketing employees, but it wasn't a ploy. Cause what I did is say, if I could create a box of consciousness, the shit that made my wild ass straighten up. Like if I could put it in a box for somebody, there was a 50 year old man that changed his religion because of this box. I think he played for like Confunction or Earth, Wind and Fire or some shit. And he was older than me. And he was like, because of this God box, I literally changed my religion. You know, so what I did was I said, I knew that this album was on another level. So if people didn't understand it, I had to go teach. So I went on a, a speaking tour, the same way y'all go on comedy tours. Exactly. I went on a speaking tour. And the, the thing that people didn't realize is I didn't go to New York. I didn't go to, I, I haven't even spoken in Atlanta yet. I didn't, I never brought it to Atlanta. I went to the country towns where don't nobody go. They think that people yeah. from country towns don't want knowledge itself. No, you won't bring your black ass there. Yeah. So if you come, they coming. Even if it's, man, I want a record deal. Or even if it's cause a girl like, damn, he look good, I wanna fuck. Yeah. However I can get them in the <laughs> seats, you no, know, I'm serious. I'm a good looking motherfucker. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Shit. But when she come, 
she gonna get something yeah. and not, not literally come, yeah. but you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. You ain't gonna have no <laughs> chops, did you? You never know. So, so, but, but when she come, she gonna get something in her head, um, too. <laughs> 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 Yeah, man. That's why they you undeserved. They be happy yeah. to see you. Even yeah. in comedy, I can imagine those towns. Like, they get overlooked by everybody. Say, I went to Tennessee, a small town in Tennessee, and spoke. And this older brother came up to me, said something that shocked me. Because white folks, believe it or not, come to my lectures too. And uh, dude said, these people, old or young, have never seen a black man talk to white folks like that. Man. I be on their motherfucking ass. Dead serious. And he was like, bro, you sh you're showing them how to stand. And Dr. John Henry Clark said something so powerful. He said, one of the pathways to freedom is just acting like you're fucking free. There you go. That's it. Because if go. you act free long enough, because to be honest, when I first really started being conscious, man, I felt uncomfortable with myself. I told a girl I was dating, I don't know this motherfucker that you dating. I'm trying to get to know this nice mototherfucker. Because like, even still to this day, I be wanting to rip a motherfucker head off. Yeah. This a motherfucker said some shit a couple days ago, and I literally almost reverted back to the old me. And, and what I tell people is meditation, it's prayer, and it's also the fact that I believe in vibrations. I don't know what type of child my son gonna be. My son may deserve to get his motherfucking head ripped off too, but maybe because I showed that fuck, <clears throat> excuse me, because I showed <laughs> him some grace, then maybe somebody will show my son some grace. Right. You know, or my daughter. Man. Right. <laughs> hey, hey. And then when you said rip a motherfucker head off, and I was like, he probably could do that shit. Yeah. Cause I remember Def Jam Vendetta. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> whooped nobody whoops David Banner's ass. You, you wanna know a back background story to that? Um Tina Davis, who was uh Chris Brown's manager at the time, she was she oversaw artist development on there. And like, I play video games for real. Right. It, 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 it tripped people out. One dude had a TV show where you came and played video games. I whooped that motherfucker. I tore his ass <laughs> apart. He was like, you game? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm human. Motherfuckers think, I told somebody this one time, just because I'm conscious don't mean I don't like to fuck. I just don't let it control me. Damn. You know, that's, I still like to fuck too, you know? So, yeah. I guess anyway. you could say you got fucking control then. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. You fucking right! <laughs> In control yeah. fuck. But, but the thing was, for Def Jam Vendetta, I told him, I was like, man, I get tired of Southerners always coming in last. Like, I don't say third coast. We ain't the third coast, we the first coast. Right. And in actuality, if you study the right knowledge, in actuality, the map of the earth is actually turned upside down. So the, the south is actually north. And people don't know that. Look up Google the real map or the real world map. It's going to freak you the fuck yeah. out. These white folks are so fucking racist that they put themselves over Africa to, 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 all, to always, yeah. not just that, to always make you feel like they're above you. Shit. Racism is so fucking deep. That's why the Nile River, they said it flows south, it actually flows north. And if you really look at the pyramids in Africa, the pyramids, the, 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 the development of pyramids actually came from the south. The pyramids were lower and lower, and, and they were perfecting them as they moved what people consider is the north, right? Mm. So in actuality, the, the information as it pertains to the pyramids actually came from South Africa. And they developed them more as it went so-called north, but that was actually down. So we actually up. I don't like motherfuckers saying down south. I don't like to say third coast. I say we, we up south. Motherfucker, there you go. we ain't last. We cleaned in a bitch. There you go. You just fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the fuck I'm from no more than that. <laughs> yes, you do. I'm from New York. <laughs> son. This is Nigga, hold, you, your, hold your fucking balls, Yo, Bobby. Yo. How you let this stand now? The nigga you come in here and eat my food, food son. <laughs> How you let this nigga come in here and eat my food, Yo, B? I knew it was fucking cold as fuck this winter. Nigga is busting my balls, <laughs> B. Yo, right here, sir. Yo, relax. Don't bust anybody's <laughs> balls. Yo, relax. Niggas don't want no smoke, man. You fucking relax. Go on, go. Fucking damn man. Relax. Ma, bring out the good <laughs> trouble way. Bring out the bank CD, ma. <laughs> we got David Banner in the building. We got David Banner here. Put some of the screws here, Tom. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the 85 Top Show. Hey, <laughs> hey, we're not gonna bust your balls 
Bro, I got the coldest David Banner story. You had a show in my hometown of Oxford. Mm -hmm. And I was I was like, fuck, I gotta work. I was delivering pizza. Mm -hmm. So I rode by the bitch. You was outside and I pulled up with in the Caprice with the motherfucking dominoes saying. I was like, this shit ain't started. Shot back to work, came back, made it to the show, bro. But something yeah. happened, you was just outside talking to everybody, bro. Yeah, man. Like before the show, I was like, this is the crazy. This nigga famous as fuck. Like, That's what listen. I always hear about Banner. You, you, he gonna talk to people. Like bro, I went people. to, I literally went to about six Banner shows. This nigga, I went like Dreamland, Holly Spring. Mm -hmm. Bro, when this nigga, when the shit, cause this shit hit in Mississippi before the world got the peace, and he went to every motherfucking city, Coffeeville yeah. and Water Valleys and the Bruces and shit. We I, went and seen about six or eight of this tell both shows. Else, I wanna address something both to both of y'all. And I'm gonna say something I never said on anybody else's show because you're from the crib. All right, so what happened was, is when people used to come to the South or come to Mississippi, they should treat the kids and they would treat us like we was dirty, dog. Motherfuckers didn't want to come outside of V. Like, I don't do VIP. What I do is wait till right before, because what I did find out is that you don't want to become too common either. You want to keep the mystique and the superhero vibe. So what I usually do now is I wait until the end of the show, then I hang out. But you always want to make motherfuckers feel like, is he coming? You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. But what it was, was I didn't like the way they made our people feel. And I said, I would try to never do people. I have my days and when I feel like that, I stay in the motherfucking house. But like, I still train at the YMCA. I still go around people. As a matter of fact, what I used to do, <clears throat> when I would do 106 in Park, it would like, it would, it, it would show the next day unless it was live. I would rush back to Jackson and go and shop in Walmart just so the kids could see me after 106 and Park to make themselves feel like they was that much closer to their dream. Right. Hell yeah. The other thing was, people thought that I got on in Mississippi and moved to Atlanta. That's a fucking lie. I got on in Atlanta. Bone Crusher introduced me to everybody. And, when I, and the, the thing that I would like to say from the bottom of my heart is I like to thank Atlanta. Because a lot of artists came here and they had to shed where they were from. They had to say that they were from Atlanta. Atlanta loved me so much and they wanted Mississippi to get on. They held me up and allowed me to use the vibrations from, Miss I mean, from Atlanta to, 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 to focus it on my people. You know, and as soon as I got my big deal, I moved back to Mississippi. I lost millions of dollars. I'm talking about like 12, 13 million dollars because I went home because I used to write down all the shit that people would say about me. They said I wasn't going to do this. They said I actually had a list and I went down and did all of them. Right before I went on my big tour, I went to just about every small town in Mississippi so motherfuckers wouldn't have shit to say. I've always been that way. But what I realized, bro, and this is for everybody out there, no matter, Pimp C taught me this, no matter how much you do for people, there's always gonna be motherfuckers that talk shit. That's and the real. reason is because yeah. most people don't love themselves. What I did, and people didn't even notice this, I knew, cause I seen some of my homeboys that would lie and say they was from Houston, say they was from New York, say they was from New Orleans, all these different places. Nigga, we grew up together, you lying. So I realized that people didn't love themselves. Right. And if they didn't love themselves and where they were from, <laughs> they wouldn't give a fuck about David Banner. So I made Mississippi popping first. Really? Every fucking day of my life, I had a Mississippi t-shirt on. And the this is really fun. Yeah. So no, this was before the jersey. I couldn't afford the jersey <laughs> yet, dog. Hey, I was dead, hey, bro. I was going to get to the jersey because, like, before you did that, you know, besides Mississippi mm -hmm. State and Ole Miss, nigga, we ain't had no team. So niggas saw that. You know, I, like, cut the, I cut the sleeves off the Ole Miss jersey because I couldn't stand Ole Miss. But they were the only motherfuckers that spelled Mississippi all the way out. Exactly. So I, I cut the sleeves off of the My jacket. My first day yeah. of ninth grade was the Mississippi jersey because yeah. it had the whole motherfucking yeah. Mississippi spelling. And the other thing that I didn't do, people never noticed, I never talked about Jackson because I never wanted people from smaller towns 
to feel like other states made us feel. I always re represented Mississippi as a whole. Right. I said I would never, ever make people feel bad. And when y'all was talking about my shows, I used to literally do this. I used to, I used to, I used to stand up in front of like 5,000 people and say, make the last song be make the girls get down on the floor, on the floor like a pimp. And then I would step to the front of the stage, sit down and sign every fucking autograph. I really believe one of the reasons why I am still here is because I really believe 45% of every one of my fans I've either taken a picture with or signed something. Yeah. And like, that that's connection. all motherfuckers really want is somebody to acknowledge them because the South had been shitted on for so fucking long. And one of the things that I did, I took everything that they said about the South and I turned it on the motherfuckers. Excuse me, nigga, where your motherfucking grandma from? When I say nigga, I mean it the same way them crackers do. <laughs> I don't say nigga as a term of endearment. But nigga, where the fuck your grandma from? If you ain't from the islands, you from South Carolina, yeah. you from Georgia, you yeah. from Alabama, you yeah. from Louisiana. The first two slave ports were South Carolina and Mississippi. So you can't say you ain't from the motherfucking South. And what people don't know is there was a, there was a unsigned law between black folks. It was called the Black Exodus. So if you left the South, your responsibility was one of two things. You were supposed to go to the North, go to the West, go to the East, and find heaven and either bring us there or come back and teach us. The reason why hood motherfuckers don't like uppity smart motherfuckers is because they didn't do their job. Mm. They did the same thing white folks did. Right. They went up north and then started looking down on black motherfuckers in the yeah. south. Well, nigga, that's where the fuck you from and you didn't do your job. So since you didn't do your job, we created our own culture. And now our culture is hotter than you. Fuck that shit. Yeah. So that is the... <laughs> that is the reason why... That was the reason why... I wanted to teach our people that there ain't nothing wrong with being educated because people made folks feel so bad about not knowing. If you a God, you supposed to teach, nigga. Most motherfuckers build just to show how smart they are. If I'm sitting, if somebody showed me this about Malcolm X. You know, Malcolm X probably had one of the greatest commands of the English language, but he never said a word that the ordinary black person couldn't understand. If I'm out here pontificating, motherfuckers don't know what right. the fuck that mean. So right. if I don't get the point over, I shouldn't have my motherfucking job if you don't understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Right. I tell everybody, when I'm learning, teach me on the kindergarten level. Yeah, I'm smarter than a motherfucker, but I may have missed something. Right. So it is our responsibility to teach. I never forget, I was watching Dave Chappelle's, uh, one of his Netflix uh, 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 joints, and he made motherfuckers laugh. I'm talking about the whole fucking show. And he came right back to Emmett Till and dropped Emmett yeah. Till on the motherfuckers and dropped the motherfucking mic. I said, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Laugh and leave a motherfucker with something to make them want to learn. Because I'll say this and then we'll move on. Because I know I start talking that shit. No, that's, uh, what, I, man, that's what you're here for, bro. No, so, that's, what, that's hey. what I'm telling you. So. That's why we got this. We seen you talk that shit like, yeah. he needs somewhere hey. else to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to be behind the camera man. talking about, well, no. Well, they can't, well, they, well, they can't no. do that to me no way. Exactly. We, we got our own cameras it, now. And we, yeah. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. Well, what I was telling you, but, but seriously, though, bro, like, what I realized was this, man. It's like, I didn't know why kids listen to me, bro. Like, I got millions of kids. And Charlemagne pulled me to the side and he said, you, Killer Mike, and Tip, whether y'all know it or not, a lot of these kids don't have fathers. So the same way they, they get on the internet and look for pussy or sex or whatever the fuck they looking for, they also looking for a dad. So they'll pull up y'all speeches, pull up the shit that y'all talking about, and you all are their fathers, whether you like it or not. And that sort of made me straighten up just a little bit more. And one of the things that I always like to do, I don't know if y'all notice this, man, I, I always fuck up once a year on purpose. I got into a fight with the cops in D.C. You know, I did a couple <laughs> other things. But I, but I actually do some of that shit on purpose. That didn't happen on purpose. That was, that was anger. But um, um, what I try to do is show these kids that I'm not perfect. You're doing what, a great job. Cause, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I actually try to do that. You know, um, I, I, I always try to grow and become smarter and get better. But I want to do like Harriet Tubman did. To yeah. me, she was the, the most successful freedom fighter because she went to heaven and she came back 
to hell and got her people Bam. and went back like 80 times, yeah. dog. Right. You know, and so that's what nah, I always Nah, but you do shit do. like that already. Yeah. Like when the hurricanes and the bad weather and shit hit the coast and Katrina and all that, David Banner sent them trucks before anybody. Yeah. And Lamont, a lot of people know that, but a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because it's like, with the whole way that the media is being consumed right now, it's like everybody has to reintroduce themselves to the internet crowd. Yeah. So a lot of motherfuckers who watch our show or, you know, fans of this shit, they ain't li- never really heard a whole Tupac album. Mm-hmm. Or they don't look yeah, at the yeah. shit that we think is classic or great the same way. You get what I'm shit saying? Shit goes so fast. Right. Man. But like you were saying, why people admire you? Because you can give us a record where we can still be niggas. But then it's like, you the, you the motherfucker who be like, all right, now we gonna do this shit, but hey, let's not forget we got some other shit to yeah. do. And then they saw you actually stand on your words. So a kid that's what's always one, commendable. A kid told me one time, David Banner, I listen to you because you don't judge us. He said, you say what the fuck you gotta say, you move on. Or you drink or whatever the fuck you gonna do, man. Cause yeah, I, I, I tell y'all something that's personal to me, man. I just, I just want us to treat each other better, man. Like, like I, I see how hard motherfuckers say that they are and that's cool. But where motherfuckers at when these crackers be killing our kids? Come on. Like, we know where these motherfucking cops stay at. We know where these motherfuckers stay at that don't keep, keep their fucking word. And I kept quiet, because I know how black folks are about Democrats. But Democrats ain't no fucking better than Republicans. These motherfuckers shine in front of you and then they never do anything. The president ain't done Come shit on. for you. Come on. And what it Come is, on. is... Is we give like. these motherfuckers, <laughs> we give these motherfuckers our constituency away, and they don't do shit for our for our for our communities. And I honestly believe that politicians ain't nothing but prostitutes. So you treat them like prostitutes. First of all, what we don't understand is you got to invest money into them. You got to make them look good. Yeah, you do. You gotta put a, gotta put some shiny shit on. Yeah. Them. Then after that, give some commands. Get out there. If it's rainy, you better dodge some motherfucking raindrops. Yeah. And then if walk you walk between them, <laughs> walk between them, right? And then if you don't do it, I'm on your ass. There's repercussions to you not doing something. Let a motherfucker not do something. Let a motherfucker say something about Trump. Let's let let somebody not do what they were supposed to do. They their constituency is gonna do something. That's why we have to do the same thing. I believe we should find the kid. No bullshit. We find the kid. Damn, that motherfucker got the gift to gab. He not scared to speak. And we all, like, about four or five of us, I already talked to Mike and them. Me, Tip, and Mike talked about this. Grab a motherfucker and be like, yo, we got to raise him. Bill Clinton, they was raising Bill Clinton and yeah. little white motherfuckers like that since they were little kids. Say, yeah. so, hey, dog, we going to take care of you for the rest of your fucking life. But here's the contract. This is what we want. When we get you in there, we <laughs> want you. And if... Same way you go after a motherfucker, they'll have a dime of your dope back, literally a dime, not a dollar, <laughs> or your dope back. If you do not meet this criteria, we're going to come see you. Bruh. Period. We should start a political party, That's just real. the niggas. <laughs> I would love to see Republicans, Democrats, the niggas voted no. That's right. The niggas voted no. <laughs> Proposition 1899 is not going through because of the niggas. The niggas came down to the vote. The niggas said no. Bro, you know how they to fuck everything up? What if we be the gods supported by the niggas? <laughs> the niggas! <laughs> right, right. With no. nigga backing? Well, yeah, with nigga, nigga backing. If you got niggas niggas, back- up, niggas is the army. There you That's go. That's like niggas the army. There you go. Yeah. With niggas. Keep, yeah, keep the- your Drake on, nigga. <laughs> keep your Drake on, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Donate some of that money from the block, man. man. Let the niggas be the army. The niggas be the army. All right, we're going to be the gods, and then we're going to have I the niggas. see nobody coming home and be like, I'm going to the niggas. Why not? You signed up to join the niggas? I go to the niggas all the time. Yeah, they already doing it. I got niggas work for me. <laughs> niggas in my family. We are gonna be recruiting, we gonna have an office. Yo, wait, wait, They wait, already wait, wait. doing it. Let me tell y'all the hardest shit. I gotta share this with y'all. Bet. I gotta share this with y'all. I had actually posted about this and I took it down. One of my, um, one of my employees belongs to one of the most powerful black organizations in the United States. And he said, Banner, I gave my life to this organization. He said, but statistics show that the people who belong to my organization will kill me before the ops will. He said, he said, you helped me take care of my family. 
Look at how much work I put in for that organization. Imagine what I'll do for you. I was like, ugh, <laughs> shit. He said, let a motherfucker breathe wrong. He said, it's nothing for me to ride. He must don't know you got a knife this big. <laughs> well, well, what, what the thing about it was, and the reason why I say that, that's how I feel about most of these kids, man. These kids just want to be listened to and want to know that somebody's going to be there. They always watching, bro. See if you, that shit that you mean, they always consider it. Because one thing I say about our children, our children are not lost. You just can't give them that bullshit. They want to hear that religion bullshit. They want to hear that politics shit. They, they, they know the truth. Y'all motherfuckers lying. Parents tell you to do as I say, not as I do. What the fuck? Right. We, are, we, are, we are people, a tribal people who learn by what we see. I used to always tell my trainers that, do 4,000 push-ups. Motherfucker, you do it first. Right. You do 4,000, <laughs> I'll do what? You do 4,000, I'm going to do 4,000. He's going to tell you he did them before you got there. <laughs> I just did them. <laughs> a motherfucker told you to do 4,000 push-ups at a time? It wasn't quite 4,000. It, was it was a lot, though. <laughs> What evil shit is it, that? Uh, it's under here now. Don't get it fucked up <laughs> now. I can give you, I can give you a couple of them. Yeah, man. No, nah, man, that shit is, it's just dope to have you in this motherfucker. And you say you get to talking that shit. That's all we do. Man, I'm happy. Yeah. We talk a whole lot of shit, but, yeah. you know, we and, mean and, well also. And you, you, you make the South proud because, like you said, we got looked down on and we got talked about so bad from those other places. And when you see it, you like, oh, that's what it really is. Like, you got somebody to point to. Like, what is it like now to see the South where it is? And then you were one of the people in the front to say, this is where it's going to be. Now to see the end result of what you were say, like predicting. All right, fuck it, here it come. I remember when um, I was on this radio station, I scared the shit out this DJ. He literally almost pissed on himself. I actually laughed after I walked out of the studio. <laughs> I, kept, I kept a G while I was in there. He was criticizing trap music. And I said, sir, let me ask you a question. I said, who would you say coined like the trap movement? And he was like, T.I. And I was like, what album ushered that in? He was like, trap music. I said, um, what was the number one single on that, on that album? He said, Rubber Band Man. I said, who produced that? He said, you. I said, so watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> I said, if he coined trap, if he coined the trap move, movement, I damn sure helped to coin trap music, the actual music, instrumentation of it. Motherfucker, watch your mouth and watch who you talking to and watch who you talking about. I said, because you really only say trap music is because you're afraid of the older Southerners. And so you want to say trap music so you can pick on those kids. Watch right. your fucking mouth. That's South music. So you, so check this out. This some cold shit. You don't never see nobody do this. So you at the height of your career mm -hmm. and you producing the biggest hits. Mm -hmm. How you separate the David Banner beats mm -hmm. from the shit that's for sale? Oh man. <clears throat> Hey, bro, if I knew Rubber Band Man was that, I would have kept it for myself. <laughs> I ain't gonna even bullshit you. Hey, you that like, motherfucker I, was that. I didn't like Like a Pimp. Shit. Being, hold on, this, I'm serious. I, I did. did. I didn't like it, um, but it had, so Flip, I would, uh, what I would do, I would barter. I was dead broke. Like, people used to see me in big cars. I used to rent cars, all kind of shit. Like, I was sleeping Being a rapper and shit. I was, I was homeless. Right. So I was a little bit broker than, than yeah, I was fucked up. I was fucked up bad. Nigga, but your come up. When I was in Atlanta, bro. Shit. When I was in Atlanta, I was sleeping on the floor next to dogs, pissing shit all on the floor. God damn. I went from being, i never forget this white boy named Billy Hume. He did a lot of the early Lil John. He did Big Crit. He did Bone Crush. He did me. I had been renting cars and staying in hotels so long, Billy Hume literally came and hugged me and said, bro, you're not homeless no more. Go buy a car. Go buy you a house, man. Stop this shit. I was just on grind. You was grinding like, that That's all I was doing was grinding, bro. And so, like with the beats and shit, like like I said, with, with like a pimp, it had Pimp C on the on I sample U, um, mm -hmm. UGK. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna put Flip on this one. I know he like this with Texas, Texas. Let me make that connection, and I was just gonna make another beat to it. But everybody flipped, and DJ Will, DJ Will from Atlanta, actually was the one that helped change my life. We were, I think we were in the bounce. I think we, it, was, we were, it was the bounce at the time. 
And so I brought him, might get your jaw broke, might get your wig split, might get your car shot up, right. might get, get your, your dog kicked, kick. <laughs> might get you kidnapped, might get your <laughs> wig snapped, <laughs> might get your feelings hurt, thinking this is just the So I brought him that, because little John was just like, ah. And Will told me, he was like, bro, this cool, but little John on every song now. He was like, bro, I don't know how you're going to be able to get through the noise. Let me check out the B side. If you look at the original single, like a pimp was side too. He played that shit in the middle of Atlanta. I'm talking about right at 11.30 at night when motherfuckers would get shot for playing some shit folk don't know. People didn't go crazy, but didn't nobody lead the motherfucking flow. He said, you got a hit. They never yeah. heard of you. That, that intro so yeah. crazy. Yeah. That, mm, 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 mm. And watch this, mm, what people mm. don't know is as a producer, I be wanting shit to be creative. That's that shit was so dope that, tag. that I didn't I didn't even take no breaks, didn't change up. This, that same eight bars went through the whole fucking song. Every time I tried to do something else to that motherfucker, and that's what I learned, you leave shit alone. And about that tag shit, any motherfucker who put their name before they beat, they need to holler at me. You did it. They need to holler you at me. You did it first. They will, David, 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 they will David, never give us credit. They will never give us credit for the shit that you we do. I wasn't the first person to put a tag before my song, but I was the first person to put my name. And Tip was the reason why they kept it on the radio, because they used to take my tags off of my music, right? And Tip was like, you play my mother, he called up the hot, and was like, you play my motherfucking record the way I send it to you, that boy yeah. worked hard. And the reason why I did that is, is because Southern rappers used to hide their producers. They didn't want nobody to know. But Jay-Z would say, just Blaze, you did it again. Kanye, you, you a fool, boo, boo. And they would go up $10,000 every time go. he said that shit. You Guru, look, you a fool yeah, for this one? Yeah, yeah. And look at KLC from Beast by the, KLC and Beast by the Pound, who yeah. did most of the P shit. Yeah. Like, did we nobody, know, about them, did nobody didn't know, know who they yeah. were? I really believe that they should be right next to Timberland and Pharrell. What Master P did in general should go down in music history. He changed the way people put out music. He so changed the way music. people, and nobody gives him the, his, his business acumen for what he did. But what they did as producers, bro, I went to KLC house. KLC um, walls go all the way to the top of the ceiling. It was platinum plaques from the bottom of the floor on that side, all the way up to the ceiling, all the way over. What most rappers do in their lifetime, them boys did in a year. Think about the albums. They would do yeah, albums. So much. Like literally, bro. And they was putting out, what, two, three albums a month? Bro, <clears throat> we, we change culture and we such, we such kind people that we allow people to take credit for the shit that we do. Now see, you talking about credit and that's perfect for what I want to ask you. Because you produce a lot of music that motherfuckers don't even know that you produce. I did 85 major groups and people don't know. 85? Yeah. Ain't that a cool Ain't that a goddamn... Hey. hey, what's that dude that hey. produced for Michael J Quincy Jones? Come on. I did Quincy Jones, Maroon 5, right. Chris Brown and Justin Bieber, bro. You know, people know about, well, some people didn't even know about the tip stuff. A lot of people didn't know I did. My first big record was uh, Thug Holiday by Trick Dad. That shit's so motherfucking yeah. But people hard. didn't know me, so it came out before I got poppy. But I'm in the video, skinny as fuck. Yeah. Mountain <laughs> the shit, yeah. Just like. Yeah, man. Just like. The, the, the thing, though. Um, Do you that, understand when you grew your beard long, every nigga from the South with a long beard, that's the David Battle. Yeah. I, you know, I... I, I, I can't take total credit for that. I think think that was me and Pastor Troy. Yeah, but see. Troy had it at the same time. In Mississippi, though? Yeah. Come on. But what I will say that um, I know a lot of motherfuckers started putting they, start showing how old they were after I did. Motherfuckers slid that in there because I was like, man, Eric, I ain't never forget one of my best homeboys, an R&B singer. I, right before 106 Park went off, uh, went off TV. He was on TV in front of little children grinding in their face, telling them, to, telling them to drink. I mean, it was the song, but I was like, bro, like, everybody want to be a fucking kid. Like, being indigenous, being from indigenous people, you're supposed to be proud to grow old. These kids don't even know who to go ask a question because everybody trying to look like a baby. When they see this beard, they know I can go ask him a question. Yeah. Mr. Banner, what is publishing? Mr. David Banner, like, what do I do if I don't want to do, if I don't want to rap this way no more? What if they try to make me do this or that? These kids know they can come to me. Y'all would be surprised what rappers call me at 4 o'clock in the morning depressed, looking for, you know, vision. 
And that's the thing that I'm the most proud of. I went to. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because I, I stopped answering rapper calls that late. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga call you at two two thirty. He well, gonna be on the phone. I'm like, bro, what are you on? Because I'm not on that. I am tired. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Let me, don't let you have this minute problem before you start calling me. <laughs> we could break this shit down. Oh. Let me tell you why I do, though, bro. Um, I went through the worst depression Word. ever, dude. And wasn't nobody there for me. And Scott, hold on, Scott, I was just about to say that. And then I ended up, I was close to dying. And I ended up meeting Scott Parker. He was a, he was a trainer at the time. And he knocked 56 pounds off, off of me. And I had never drunk. Uh, I had never drunk like more than two glasses of water in a day. I had been dehydrated my whole life. We drew, we grew up on Kool Aid, dog. And the only time I really drunk water was when Mama would let us in the house and we had to get it out, out of the, the hose. hose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I used to play ball. I actually thought I was fly. I still smell good and shit. You know, after I played six, seven games, I was dehydrated. Scott, man, would come and just sit over at the crib, man. I, I didn't know what the fuck was wrong with me. It was crazy because I come from one of the po poorest places on in the United States. Really I, didn't start, I didn't start getting depressed until I had <clears throat> something to lose. Right. See, when you ain't got nothing to lose, you ain't worried about shit. Mm. But like, I had million dollar problems and my uncle don't know nothing about no million dollar problem. Everybody around me at the time, I didn't have mentors and shit. Everybody was broke that was around me. They needed me. And I didn't have nobody to, to depend on. So I, I think God let me sit in that place by myself. And then he allowed me to meet Scott. And Scott helped me get through some of that stuff. But I know what it feels like to be alone. Dude, I went from being homeless and two weeks later being a millionaire. Can you imagine being in the middle of Mississippi and a motherfucker announced David Banner got $10 million? Hell no. Dog, people don't understand the pressure that I went through. Lucky that I was the person that I was, but I know for a fucking fact if I would have been an inch weaker, an inch shorter, I would have got ate up, dog. Like people don't understand the 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 the, the we have as 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 black folks in America, there's some underlying shit that we gotta go through that the, no other race of people have to go through, bro. Like, and so like, bro, for me, when I see other rappers going through that shit, I gotta wake up. Because God put me through that by myself and it was so fucking hard. I said, there's no way I won't pick up that phone. Like, I got to pick up that phone, man. Not too many people have my number, but the do those that do. And then I watched these folks grow, man. I'll never forget this. He, he, may, not, he, he may not want me to say this, man, but um, when Offset had, it is one of the greatest things that happened to me. Offset had just got out right when Amigos had blew up. He was, walk, he was walking through Midtown and... I was like, what's up? He was like, what's up, OG? And he pulled me over to the side. He was like, man, I want to do better, bro, but I don't know how. He's like, I want to do better. I just don't know how. And bro, for a young man that didn't need nobody, they were popping so far. He might not even remember that. Man, that meant the world to me that he literally, I wouldn't even say humble. He trusted me enough to say, bro, I need help. And you know in the streets, especially where the fuck we from, that's the reason why motherfuckers so mean. Motherfuckers really be wanting to say, I need help. Better, I want to make my life better. But they don't know how to come to you, so they, nigga, I hate you. I hate you for reminding me of what I'm not. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So to be in that position, bro, I'm honored to pick that call up, bro. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we in this bitch. Hey, man, answer the phone. When we to call you. And we want to talk for four hours, man. Shit. We in this bitch. Man, we in this bitch, bro. I, I got to say something before, because they, 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 they always get on me, man. They always get on me. God Box 2 is about to come out. I, that's, man, sign my God Box. That's, that's, re that's really important. Sign, sign the God Box, That's bro. really important. Um, I, All I'm going to say it ain't nothing like the first one. Open it up. Same um, on the white part. It ain't nothing like the first one, man. Yeah, I want my shit to be preserved. And uh, <laughs> and another thing that I want everybody in this bitch to do, go to davidbanner.com and go and buy you something directly from me. Everybody always asking, how can I help? Go to davidbanner.com. That's straight from us. Let me ask you this. What, what made you go on the independent route this time around? Uh, well, between us, I can say this now. Uh, I've been independent almost 12 years. Right, right, right. What I did was I found out 
motherfuckers was hurting themselves because when black people think about independent and black, they always, they have fooled us into thinking that that means low quality. That's why everything, touch that motherfucking bag. Just tell you, ooh, don't that shit feel good? <laughs> Everything that I do is shiny and it feel good. Yeah. You heard, that's some money. Look at them good images yeah. on that bitch. <laughs> but no, nah, seriously. I, um, I can I, spend the night with this bitch. Ain't no crows or sad. I, I can spend the night. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, so what I realized is that that's, that was the mindset of our people. So literally, people don't know this. I went to Steve Rifkin. And I said, Steve Rifkin, I can't be you signed to you. Like I found out like a Universal owed me a lot of money. And I said like, man, like I went to the head of Universal. And he literally said, Dave Banner, you smart dude. I know you're gonna find out soon. And he literally showed me all the stuff. Even how they worked records and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not what we think it is. Right. That's one of the reasons why I never signed anybody. You know, bro, you know how much money I can make? Cause I'm a producer and I make all the beats if I sign artists. But the thing is, the truth is, is the way this shit worked, they throw a thousand, they threw, like I say, they throw 15 artists up against the wall and then they grab the one that stick. But you know us, man, we love the people that we signed to, they, they family now. I can't just let you fall on the floor. I can't take 10 motherfuckers failing and one or two having a total line. I can't do that. So what I decided to do, I'll help anybody that wanna be helped. I help you start your own shit. I want to free the slaves. Most black people, and I'm just being honest with you, most black people don't want to free the slaves. They want the opportunity to hold a whip. Damn. You feel what I'm saying? Man, say that so like shit. for me, I always wanted to make people, help people to get free. And then motherfuckers will turn around and hate you because most motherfuckers want to be put on. They don't want to do the work. Ooh. They don't know how hard it is for you to be on tour. Mm. I be watching you, dog, from city to motherfucking city every night having to prove your fucking self. People don't understand that shit, dog. This shit not easy. So when I told Sali, Sali loves music. Like he got a he got an old soul, bro. Like he listens to the shit that we listen to, bro. And I say, bro, if you really love music like that and you bring artists, I'll help you, bro. But the thing is, I just don't want to take the responsibility of somebody else's life because I take that shit serious. Right. And I end up, man, getting soaked up and used up, man. I never forget, bro, when I did the work for Katrina. We raised all that money, bro. And I never said this nowhere, bro. I'm giving you this because you're from where I'm from and y'all representing. Like, I love what y'all represent. So I give y'all some shit. They're going to have to come get sound bites from y'all. Come on, man. <laughs> um, bro, we wrote... Uh, along with Atlanta, people don't know, we threw the largest urban relief concert in history for Katrina. And it was the first time that conglomerate, different radio conglomerates, they were on each other's station. Like, uh, 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 like V103 was on hot. Like they literally got on each other's station. That shit like gang banging. If y'all know anything yeah, about the radio, they don't play yeah. that shit. Yeah. They put all that shit aside, man. But let me tell you what hurt me. We raised close to a million dollars, and then I realized most of the shit black people want rappers to do, if all the rappers, including Jay-Z, gave their money, it wouldn't be enough. Like, what's going on at home in Jackson right now, we just raised money to it was me, Monty Ellis, uh, Big Crit, and Mo Williams. We just sent gallons and gallons of water home. But that's a, that's a structural problem, bro. Right. That's a, over a billion dollar problem. That's billions of dollars, bro. What was what, like, think about it. Let's say if I had a million dollars, right? How many houses could I build with a million dollars? Not many, nah. at the most 20. You talking about tens of thousands of people who were displaced, but people are looking at rappers to do stuff that they don't even expect their government to do, bro. Mm. And so people will sit back and talk about what we doing, bro. You have no idea of how, come. when I figured out, dude, I ain't even, as much as people were holding me up, that wasn't shit, dog. And it made me feel so fucking helpless, bro. Like, when I realized, man, that a lot of times we get, that's the reason why if y'all come to any of my lectures, I speak three times better than I actually do in my lectures, but I don't want you to catch the Holy Ghost. I want you to keep your fucking mind intact. We want people that make us feel good, that give us turkeys during Thanksgiving. I don't even praise Thanksgiving, that's some evil shit. Fuck that. You don't want a motherfucker to give you a turkey. You want a, you want a motherfucker to teach you how to get and eat, how to grow fucking crops, how to create your own fucking shit, dog. 
And I'm starting to realize this shit, and this shit is so fucking lonely, bro. It's the loneliest shit in the world, bro, because I see shit being illuminated. That's why a lot of motherfuckers want to stay dumb. There's bliss in being dumb. I know better, bro. So I be looking like, fuck, we fucking up. Like, even, watch this. I'm serious about this. I ain't never said I would. Sally, I know I shouldn't say it. I'm going to say it anyway. Um, I in no way am, and I know people are going to try to, y'all help me on this, because I know people are going to try to flip this against me. But I actually wanted the political situation to stay, that it was, stay the way that it was a little bit longer. And I'm going to tell you why. For the first time since the 60s, you saw motherfuckers that were selling dope on the corner talking about politics. You saw motherfuckers fed up. I've never seen black people talk about <clears throat> politics every day for four years straight. We had just started fucking with each other. We had just started realizing America don't give a fuck about us. And I wrote online, don't be in a rush to go back to sleep. You know how mama told us, don't go across, don't walk across that street without looking both ways. And we don't look both ways until that motherfucker tapped our ass. And if you look at it, when Obama was president, dog, white folks were saying this is a post-racial America. We crocker, need it. Crocker, how the <laughs> fuck you know? That's like me telling a woman, oh, pregnancy don't hurt that much. How the fuck would I know? <laughs> so I started watching because of the pain right. and how America was treating us. We had started fucking waking up. And I was like, ooh, because no lie. Last year, the last year of Trump's uh, presidency was the best it ever been for me business wise. Black people started seeing the relevancy in that black fist. That sign that I had created has started being like the shield for black people. Mm -hmm. And if you really even think about Bill Clinton, most of the laws that really affect black and Latino people they were passed by Bill Clinton. I was passed by Bill. What's, what's your president now name? Tell me his name. Who, Joe Biden? Yeah. Go and look at uh, uh, how many bills he was a part of that, that locked black folks up. <laughs> All of them. He, 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 he wrote the shit in there writing first, didn't he? Wasn't so, he the one who wrote it down? So right, niggas going to jail. <laughs> drew some pictures to go with it, baby. So, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying is, bro, is like, I realized as far as to answer your independent question, yeah, because I realized a long time, a long time ago, motherfucker ain't gonna help you. It ain't a motherfucker responsibility. It ain't. Somebody told me today, if everybody came from a grateful situation, like being grateful that you fucking breathe. Like I tell y'all, well, I was sick, really sick, uh, about two months ago. Uh, I ain't gonna tell y'all how sick I was, but I was really sick, and. There were some things that I didn't even think about, bro. Like, I didn't think about smelling. You don't think about smell. Like, you just take that for granted. The, the fact that I can smell, I can use my eyes, I can touch and feel shit. Some people don't have this. And listen to me, this is really important. It'll make your life better. Every problem that you have on this planet is connected to a blessing. If you lose your mama, well, you had a mama. Some people don't know their mama, never had a mama in their life. If you wreck a fucking car, you had a car. In order for you to lose something, you must have had first been blessed with that shit. Talk your shit, And David when man. I realized that, bro, it changed Talk the whole shit, fucking man. course of my life, Jack. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you got me looking for some Smoke shit. That that Smoke that dope! If you lost it. Smoke that dope! If you lost it. Smoke that dope! That nigga got me What a bitch you said, <laughs> What a small people, Scott! What a small people! I got this thing for a small Women, I'm gonna hook you people up. Don't, I, you, oh, you got I just, hey, he said he got him. I got him. <laughs> no, no, Lee, come here, look at me in my face. Come here, dog. He said he got him. I'm plug you in. I'm plug you in. They love me. I've been on Little Women of Atlanta and everything. They, they, really? They love me. They love me, bro. You think I'm? I'm. Guys, you fucking. They love me, G. They love me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they I'm love sorry, I, I met little people, y'all. Y'all, like, can, can you oh, beep that out for me, bro? Yeah, they they beep. They yeah, let you, get, you get to say the M word Damn. one time. Damn, one time, that's Damn. it. But don't say it where I'm going to take you at. Yeah, I ain't going to make everybody. I'm dead. You, listen to me. Punch look at me look, look in, in my eye. Goddamn <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I would like her to do, bro, I had a, I had a hernia, so my balls are a little bit longer than most people. <laughs> Girl. She can box the motherfucker. <laughs> what type of shit is you on? <laughs> Not while I'm hitting the weed. <laughs>
This nigga just, that's a whole ass website fetish. Ball box. Ball box. Oh, shit. With Lil Taylor. Ah! <laughs> Yo, son. No, no. Yo, son, she literally busting my balls, nigga. <laughs> she busting my balls. She real balls. I don't even know why you said that on here, because now the comments are going to be like, hey, bro, David Banner is serious, bro. Tiny Tina's down. <laughs> We're getting 80000 a month on OnlyFans. Please, you can you me? send me a contact for David Banner? Uh, you want me to open my phone up? No. Okay. Oh, it's coming. Do right. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let me drop this and then I'm going to send you all the deets. <laughs> <laughs> now it's going to be a gang of little chicks oh, in my... Man, Where's David Banner? Man. I'm dead serious. Now I'm going to pull up in your, at your farm with a hundred little women. Hey, hey Scott, <laughs> come, would you come in for a minute say it loud so people can, can, can hear it? Tell them what I asked you to do when I die. Well, you carry that to the funeral by Mickey. <laughs> no, six <laughs> little people. Little no, people. little people. Little yeah. You a big guy. I don't know if they're going to be able to put well, it. Well, 12. 12. Right, yeah, man. you got to double up. Yeah. We'll make it a bacon <laughs> studs and then get 13. Yeah, man. I'm dead serious, though. No disrespect. I'm serious. That's, I believe you. Know, no, hey. It's going to be I, 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 I do a lot of shit. I try not to lie. <laughs> I just be quiet. Oh, you ain't man. gotta lie to a motherfucker. Just don't say nothing. Man. Oh, you know, shit. Talk about these cold ass beats you be putting yeah. out, man. Oh, this, you know, historic shit. Get like me. Oh, man. Um, it's, 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 it's crazy. So you, like, let me ask you on some producer shit. You, can you tailor that shit? Like, you can say, I got some Chris Brown shit over here. I got some. No, and I'm gonna tell you why. The only beat that I've ever made for somebody that they wanted that beat was Nelly Tip Drill. That was only beat. Wait a minute. Mm. Let that bitch breathe, David Banner. <laughs> David Banner. You let know? that bitch breathe. Tip Come drill. On. You didn't know I did tip drill? Come yes. On. Okay. Come on. I was hoping you would say that you did it though, but when that, when that one came out, that one fucked the whole game up. I didn't even know, bro. Like the it, video, cause the, the song period, yeah, the whole the video. Cause the whole album was a remix album, so that's actually the remix to Ei, right? I didn't know it. So why? I'm gonna tell y'all something that's even crazier, right? And this is when I was. I was still sort of old David Banner trying to be better. So y'all saw the video, right? Nelly never told me that he was shooting the video until the day of. I didn't understand. So I was like, I'll be, he said, I'm shooting videos. Cause he shot like seven videos, right? He said, I'm shooting videos. And I was like, well, I ain't tripping. Like, you know, I, ain't, you know, I don't want to stand in. Most people be looking for the camera. I don't, he never told me he was shooting my song. So I roll up right at the end. Benny Boom, I'm cool with Benny Boom. And I saw all that shit. I was like, Benny, shoot me in as many places as you can and sprinkle me through the whole video. <laughs> Y'all, I, I, I know this is going to break a lot of my homeboy's heart. I was only at the tip drill video for literally about 15 minutes. So I missed, I missed the credit card and I missed the data. I, like literally it was at night. I was there the last 15 minutes. But yeah. everybody always, they held me up when I went back home. Like it was in the video and I was like, sorry. <laughs> Like, yeah, I caught the video last 15 minutes. I, yeah, it that was. was a, and I don't even think it was no more. It wasn't that many women even left there. <laughs> that when was I was they, was, they, yeah. was, they was tired. Yeah, man. <laughs> Started yeah. out hustling. Ended up balling. Yeah. Um, I'll tell y'all this, man. This, this, this will really tell, trip a lot of people out. Um, Wayne, Chris Brown, Tip, Devin the Dude, Fiend. Um, I know you fuck with Devin the dude. Hard, like, just yeah. a man from Mississippi. Yeah, uh, I always, I always made big beats, and a lot of artists are not really, they rap, but they not rappers. Oh shit! So like, oh shit! I'm the type of person like I grew up liking like lyrics of Fury, Rock the Bells, like them really hard songs. I used to tell people. Cause people didn't even know, like I was, I used to be a freestyle champion. Like people are surprised about the God box. I didn't rap a certain way just because I wanted my people to get it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like be super I, I started off, I started off a fucking battle rapper. So right. when people, and, and if, if you go back and listen to all my albums, I would always have one of those songs on every one of my albums, right? But what, what, what it was, was that, is that most people are intimidated. Like when I make a beat, a rapper is just another instrument to me. I really, no lie, I, I think my beats are bigger than most rappers. 
But like I would tell people, I would always look at a beat like a fucking dragon. And I ain't even have a nice, I had a rusty ass spoon. And I'd run that bitch down the back of the dragon neck and drag that motherfucker down. Like that's how I looked when I used to go. Like when I only had like a pimp and I had to prove myself. Yeah. Like I never forget, we did Canada with 50. And they had never seen, like if any of y'all, you done seen my show, I, this is like a black rock show. Like, hey man, this nigga do about four songs, then he gonna stop, he gonna say some real ass shit, go to the hard ass shit, and then he might say, hold up, hold up, man. Do that motherfucker over, and then the niggas be like, hold up, man. I'm talking do about backflips. I used to spit fire. Uh, yeah. All kind of shit, right? So, um, that should be by the time we left Canada, they said that Dave Banner is one of the best artists that ever came through Canada, but that was before people really even knew who I was, and I appreciate 50. Cause 50 gave me my first tour opportunity. Like we, I literally went, I gotta tell y'all, I literally went from doing like 5,000 to 15,000, 20, 30,000, bro. And that shit was something different. I tell y'all the funniest shit, this shit happened, for real. Like I never really wore Timberlands and shit that much. We always wore J's, cause that was our shit in the South. Right. But since we were up there in the cold, I had got some black Tims. I would never wear like the construction Tims. Cause I was like, we from the south, so I always, if I had some tins, I wear some black tins, right? So I used to flip off of the stage. This time, I decided to do a front with no hand flip off the stage, and the the, the heel of my boot hit this white girl in her head, bam, <laughs> knocked her out. We were so crunk. She got up and her boyfriend said, fuck her, keep going. He was so crummy, he was like, yeah. And I was like, what about your girl? Like, fuck her. Rock, David Banner, rock. And I was like, yo, and I was scared for like a month. I was waiting on the motherfucking lawsuit. He, I'm not lying, he literally kicked her and fuck her, rock. Okay, now let me show you how the 85 South show works. Man, just by you saying that, there's gonna be somebody in the comments be like, that lady was my aunt. I swear to God, she wants to come on the show. And she's gonna have a mark across her motherfucking head. Flip kick. I'm gonna sign that bitch. So you flip kick into the crowd. Yeah. And bow. Yeah. So let me, I wanna ask you this. How long Fuck her, keep going. did you have? that play beat before you let everybody else hear it, before the world got it. All right. Was that one of them ones you were sitting on? No, I actually didn't produce that. College Park produced that. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because like, when it came out, people thought that I was biting off the Yin Yang Twins, and that's, that wasn't the truth. College Park wanted to create something that was called intimate club music. So it's, the lyrics are hella hard, but you whisper. Like, I, I can't, I, it's that, that nastiest was. shit ever. You know, it's catch it in your mouth, mouth, mouth like your Randy Moss. Like, it, anyway, so, so what happened was I would always keep, actually, I had it today and, and end up leaving. I, I keep a checkbook. Like, one of the things that people always talk about, they bosses and they CEOs, but you still waiting on that check from New York or L.A. Like, not me. I mean, I can give you what other people can give you, but I can pay you today. So, mm -hmm. actually, me and E-40 are really tight. He wanted that beat, but he, he told Kyler Park he was going to get back. I heard the beat, and I was like, I got 10. I got 10,000 right now. I know you get paid more, but I got 10 stacks right now. <laughs> now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I never said this before. You, I get paid a lot of money for my beat. You got 10 sitting right there in front of me. As long as you don't tell nobody, you tell motherfuckers you gave me 50 racks. <laughs> Run that bitch. I'm from, man, I'm from the crib. Fuck that shit. So I told Kyle Park. But the tag ain't going to be the same. <laughs> David Bandana. <laughs> 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 that was funny. So, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> can't afford the real thing. So, that bit. The, uh, but the other, the other story behind that, bro, is that um, uh, white folks, I had, um, I don't know if I should say this, I had, I had kicked open 10 doors at Universal, like, they owed me money, and like, bro, I had toured for eight months, and like, my mom was at home hungry, bro. And like, I toured, I hadn't, cause I, I had yeah, and they owed me money. And so I had done that much earlier. And I was actually about to be blackballed. And I heard this from two different people that I trust, th actually three people, that like, these executives are scared of you. 
And if you don't change something, they're going to make sure that you never do business in the music industry again. Now, I just signed a publishing deal not too long ago. And I sign at me in deals. Don't give all your publishing away. I'll teach y'all something. Like, dude, if they give you a publishing deal, your money is already in the system. All you need to do is go find a publishing lawyer to free your money up. If they give you a million dollars, you got three million in the system. So then they end up taxing you like it's a loan for money that you already have. Won't nobody tell these kids that. The publishing shit is a bullshit. It's the biggest farce of all time. But anyway. Publishing with David Banner. Yeah, man, I mean, that shit uh, there, guys. Real uh, quick, too. <laughs> but um, they, 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 told, they told me that if, if, if you don't change something about yourself, they're going to they're gonna blackball you. You'll never make another album again. So don't play with me. Don't play with me. I got cool as a motherfucker on that bitch. And it was so funny. If y'all go back and look at play, I'll tell y'all something about playing like a pimp. You go back and look at play, I look like a motherfucking um, fucking maniac. Because I was so used to thugging it out, throwing bottles, and, 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 and it was crazy, bro, because I just didn't know how to be cool. So if you look at play, I'm actually like, I don't know how to two-step. Like, I'm used to this. Like, it was the most awkward shit. And no bullshit after that, my whole life changed. Like, women came from everywhere. I'm talking about the most ratchet, bro, to queens of comp. Like, bro, I had a model one time that called my manager and asked, could she book me? She a model, what the fuck she booking me for? Aha! Like, it was that good. Like, it, my whole fucking life changed, but I wasn't raised to be cool. I was always raised to be aggressive. I was always a hunter <laughs> my whole fucking life. So, from being the hunter to now, women hunting me. Hold on, so what happened when she booked you? When you got there? Okay. Come oh, on, man. Oh. I'm just saying. It was a dope shoot. It was a dope shoot. <laughs> well, it was dope because, uh, you know, to, to get booked yeah. and work. Yeah. You know, we're going to put that work in. Got to work. work. Yeah. Mississippi. <laughs> work. Yeah. Ham, oh, ham. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of David stuff we may not be David. able to do. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Nah. hell of a uh, alias right so now. You I, can have that So shit. I'll tell y'all one other thing. Um, like a pimp, a lot of people thought that I just got conscious recently. I'm in conscious since the 11th grade. We just come from very violent backgrounds. I was conscious in my head, but I didn't know how that shit worked in real time. Mm. Like the truth is you can't lead the people if you can't feed the people. I don't give a fuck how much knowledge you give them. If they don't see how that manifests in the money, then motherfucker don't want to hear that shit. Right. I know if I got some crap, I'm going to get something. Arrested, some money, fucking AIDS, <laughs> some pussy. I'm going to get something. If I got, if I got this smoke, I'm going to get something. This other shit y'all talking about is hypothetical. So if you go back and, and turn the music off on Like a Pimp and just look at the video, we ran the Ku Klux Klan out of Mississippi. Yeah. We pushed the fucking cross down. I took the Confederate, the Confederate flag, flag and threw that bitch back. And it actually, I had a, I had a, I had an album, a mixtape that was called Sex, Drugs, and Video Games. It said Sex, Drugs, and something else. Like, it was so serendipitous. It was so close to the fucking future, but nobody ever fucking listened. Even lyrics, nobody been rapping my ass off. My only thing was my diction. I sound like I had fucking cotton in my mouth, but I always been fucking rapping. That's one of the things that pissed me <coughs> off, actually even more than the beats, is I am just now, since the, uh, the BET Cypher was the first time that I actually started getting fucking credit for my verses, bro. You know, but we're gonna strangle their ass. You got to. Yeah, yeah. Doing it. yeah, but you know, fuck that. Don't never change shit you doing because yeah. you're doing it right. Yeah. You just get, man, <clears throat> I think bro, with me, I just got tired, bro. Like, I don't have no kids yet. I just practice a lot, you know? And um, Man, have some kids. You can afford them. Yeah, oh, I can. But yeah. I, like, what people, if people never <clears throat> even knew, people never look at shit. Don't nobody study. If you look at my career, bro, I was either producing, Acting, activist, doing my own album, speaking. Like, I went 10 years, bro. This is a story I never told nobody. I went 10 years. And um, I was supposed to go on Carter Three Tour with Wayne, because my manager at the time was really good friends with Cortez. And I was so burnt out that when I tried to get up, I couldn't stand up. 
And I, had, I stayed in the house for seven months and couldn't move. Literally, Wayne, was, they was like, you come on this tour. And I tried to get up and I could, couldn't fucking stand up. I literally worked. I just started enjoying my career to about three years ago. All I ever did was work. Damn. Yeah. And then you spend all this money, bro, like the money be gone, bro. Like what Cito said, that little money be gone. It be true, bro. I don't know where the fucking money, because I never was no big stunner or no shit like that. And like, bro, I ran through it. You still drive fast as fuck? No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah, now you know you was notorious for driving yeah, fast the, as fuck. Um, the government had wrote me a letter and said that uh, they was going to suspend my license indefinitely. One time a cop asked me, why do I do shit like that? And I told him, because I can afford to. Yeah. Uh, Good. That's a Jack Johnson yeah. type. I'm surprised he didn't shoot yeah. my motherfucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. I looked up. He was like, huh. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. In Mississippi, yeah, too. Y'all oh, yeah. got, got it out me today, bro. <laughs> that shit, man. Hey. Because yeah. you, you don't understand. Like me and this man right here started our comedy career mm -hmm. together, and he'll tell you we've been everywhere. And motherfuckers be like, bro, you gotta get with Banner. You and Banner, when y'all link, that shit gonna be yeah. crazy. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. So yeah, man. just for this shit to happen right here, the way it happened, this big ass knife. Yeah, man. Come on, man. I will keep the sword in the family. <laughs> For the power! I will, I, 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 he, would tell you, he would tell you, you see, this is the knife I had in my pocket. I will guarantee you, I would do a whole lot of Mississippi shit with it. I will not let you down. Stay with a knife in the Cadillac. Come yeah. on, man. Okay. Uh, you, know. you got a little motherfucking chopper. You know, chop a motherfucking nub off. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, you slew foot motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> this, what's the last thing before we go, bro? What you want to know for oh, I leave? Man. Anything. Shit. What's next? I was asking about that cartoon. Yeah. Okay. Before the... Because uh, you know we're trying to get in the animation industry. Yeah. Who better to get in it with than... All right. Well, you asked me what's next, bro. Is that um, I have a company that's called the Banner Vision. And uh, I remember when um, this dude told me a story about this little black girl. She ran into the kitchen crying uncontrollably and said, Daddy, 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 are there going to be any black folks in the future? And he said, why you say that, baby? She said, because I was watching the Jetsons and I didn't see none. When, when people do futuristic movies and sci-fi, they're telling you what, the future, what they want the future to look like. And most of their futures are without us. So it's our responsibility to put ourselves, think about it, when you make a song, when you make a movie, when you write a skit, you could literally be anywhere in the world. We usually put ourselves back in pain. I see so many people, man, when I watch black movies, it'd be the same bullshit that them crackers be doing. Like we can't even win in our own fucking films. I ain't gonna even call out this film. I watched this motherfucker did it. Both of the motherfuckers die? Like what the fuck? We can't even, we can't even win in our fucking dreams. Them crackers got our heads so fucked up. Every Abandoned Vision movie that you see, I got a cracker kill quota, and we always gonna win. You can best believe that shit. <laughs> they, they fucked that's up. That's a good model. It's, bro, American Gangster is about the police. It's the hero. <laughs> like, you, what is they really saying? Man. The police is the gangsters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. As far as the cartoon is concerned, bro. Come um, on, man. Talk to me. I'm actually, bro, I'm trying to create, and people always think that I want to do everything positive. It's that I just want us to control the narrative. Everything about us isn't positive. But I do know that I want our children. Like, this is how I feel about racism now. Um, I used to be really angry at white people. I'm no longer angry at white people anymore because that brings your vibrations down when you hate. In order, for, you know, in order for you to keep a motherfucker down in the ditch, you got to get down there with them, right? Right. So I just want them to leave us the fuck alone. It ain't their responsibility to do for us. We sit back and don't even know that we talking like slaves. We don't even know when, something, when a cracker kill an innocent black person and we post that shit and don't do nothing about it, we become the poster child for white supremacy. And I don't believe they're supreme at all. But if you're going to post some shit and then you ain't going to go do nothing about it, you're a fucking coward. You actually show up. That's like if you whoop my ass right now and I post that shit. Posting you whooping my ass and ain't nobody, did nobody do nothing about it? Did nobody do nothing? That make you look like the G. 
So why we keep posting that shit if you're not going to do nothing? But let a motherfucker not bring your dope back. You'll run up in the house and kill everybody. So why is that? We will throw our fucking lives away. I know, I, I know me. I used to go to a club every fucking week that people would literally die in that motherfucker. I don't even want to call the name of the club. Like, motherfucker would die and people would stop dancing for like an hour. And then they'd throw back that ass up from juvenile and motherfuckers would wipe the blood up and get right back out there, right? <laughs> so if we, if, we don't, if we go places like that knowing, like my mama, my mama told some, bitch, some people in the country where she stay at, my mama always go on, um, um, always go on boat rides, cruises and shit. That lady said, you ain't scared of that water. You can't drink all that water. My mama said, you drive every day. You can't swallow all that concrete. So if, if we're going to be that bold against each other and be quick to throw our lives away over a bullshit, why we can't stand for somebody raping and killing kids? I don't get that shit, homie. But anyway, about the cartoon. <laughs> the cartoon, nah, bro. Man. I just, I just want to oh, take the cartoon is about the cartoon. All that shit you just the cartoon said. Is, hey, shit. Actually, on, in a strange you. way, it always is. <laughs> it actually always is. But what I'll tell you, man, is that we just want to create stuff that's meant for us. Yeah. The only thing that I want to say, man, as far as I'm concerned, bro, is I just hate the fact that people that give the most to our communities are the people that we give back to the least. You know, we always talk about how much people sacrifice, but we give our money away to people who treat us like white folks do. A motherfucker tell you, I'm coming to your motherfucking town, I'm gonna fuck your old lady and leave a pussy wet. We give him all our money. Be like, oh man, please come fuck my old lady. You know what I'm saying? Like seriously, I, I, I started peeping that shit. Like motherfuckers that treat us like white folks treat us is the motherfuckers that we give our money to. We'll support a motherfucker. Like I give you an example. I'm doing better than most people on this planet that talk the shit that I talk. But I always ask this when I speak. I said, do y'all think I'm the antithesis to Donald Trump? And people say, yes, that means the opposite. Am I the opposite? Well, yeah. I said, well, I ain't rich as he is because white folks made him rich. So if I'm the direct opposite, then I should be as rich as Donald Trump right now. But the problem is, is most black people see themselves through the eyes of white people. Most of the time when we look at some black person suffering on TV in the back of our mind, we say that nigga probably deserved it. Put my black people out. What was he doing? Yeah, yeah. We'll make you. It's, it's proven guilty until a motherfucker innocent. And even when he innocent, they passed a law about well, somebody. He did. They always right. Right. Fuck that. Take care of me. Don't wait till I die. DaveBetter.com right now in this motherfucker. Go subscribe to Dave Better motherfucking podcast right now. Get you some podcasts. I want all y'all to come. I got an idea of something I want you to do on my podcast, bro. Let's get it. You gonna show your ass. You literally. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Not, no, not literally, but yeah. No, whatever the assignment is, I but, will go there. I will do this with my knife. But but what I say I to y'all. the knife. What I say y'all. Oh. You know, you remember the golden child? I, 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 Where's I, I, the knife? <laughs> yeah. But what I'll say in closing, man, I appreciate y'all for giving me access to y'all fans. Because what people don't understand, bro, is when y'all bring them on y'all show, y'all give them the opportunity to touch. Like he said, some people may not know or remember. You know what I'm saying? And I want to be reciprocal to y'all. I want y'all to come on. You know what? A lot of our fans probably were some of your fans first. Yeah, they probably were. Because we keep this it's, show. It's a big crossover. Yeah, bro. we keep this show South so is. thorough. Man, We this the type of people that we They going to say how they roll to you yeah. in the comments. That's what it's going to be. Okay. They going to be. He will let you know that it, like he can verify oh, that I have actually rode a Cadillac and played your music okay. at, at, at an obscene level. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Came on stage around the world to, because it was like I needed that yeah, man. to represent, so I can say, yeah, we got one. Yeah, man. Um, I'll say this to the people before I leave, and then we gotta go. Um, I'm one of the few rappers that um, the general public allowed to grow up. Most motherfuckers who grow up get smarter. They broke, or they sell out. You know. And I'm one of the few people, man, I, I, I decided to grow up in front of people and motherfuckers didn't ostracize me, you know, and I'm grateful for that, man. Last year was literally the best year of my life as an independent businessman. Be um, because, because we were independent, other motherfuckers was trying to find a way to get their shit set up online with COVID. We had all our shit ready. And like literally when people were looking for a flag, when people were looking for something to go to, how did, we had it already ready for them. 
it, 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 it hurt us a little bit because we have been struggling so long. You know, and I tell people this. Oh, I still got my flag. Too. Yeah. Literally everything that you see that I create, we pay for it. So like when a motherfucker drop a fly on the ground, y'all be like, why they better picking up flies and shit? Fuck around and throw that bag on the ground. I'm gonna repurpose that <laughs> motherfucker. That's it. Shit. I know how much all that shit costs. But bro, like, I'll tell y'all this in closing, man. My dream, and hopefully, because you're great at doing this, man. My dream is to be able to create a, a city, like Silent City. I was thinking about going to North, like North Mississippi right before you get to Memphis. I was thinking about building. That sounds like Oxford. Yeah, it's close. That sounds like where I'm from. It's close. Yeah. But I'm out too below early. I was thinking Oxford. Oxford's the great, greatest wanna, city up there. I want to buy, I want to buy, I want to create a city where our people can come and stay that we don't talk about. We talk too much shit. We let the enemy know that we coming way too early. I want to tell y'all this, and I mean this. We need to get a group of us that when we really get our paper up and say, okay, you start a water company, you start an electricity company, you start a security company, you, uh, um, I'd never forget this. When I went to see the minister, when I saw Minister Farrakhan, he said, Banner, if you really want to be that billionaire you're talking about, grow organic food. He said, like, these white folks are destroying the food and the earth so much. If you create organic food, they will come and bow to you like a king. So watch this. I don't give a fuck how much we fight. I don't give a fuck how much we jump up and down and march. If they got the food, bro, I think that's the one thing that the South did fail the world with. We were supposed to be the farmers. Kids think fucking around with the dirt is whack. That's what you put inside of your body to sustain yourself. If you don't have food, water, and electricity, motherfuckers gonna get right. They gonna be like, yeah, man, let's get these crackers. I'm hungry. <laughs> let's get these crackers. I'm cold. <laughs> like, literally, bro, that's, that's my dream, bro, to, to be able to build somewhere where our families could fuck with each other and we won't need nobody. Mm. Well, I know a lot of places up in North Mississippi that just happens to be my neck of the woods. So if you would like to discuss your plan, yes, sir. I am with the shits, David Banner. Yes. I have the knife now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you heard it here first, man. This is hey, the first man. time David Banner came Come on, man. I'm coming back. Make some noise, man. Make some noise. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Here we go. All ready. You all right? Oh no, that's I'm about to steal somebody from Don't me. steal the shit, man. <laughs> that's your one right there. Okay. Let's I get think. the flick. Come on. This is how cold I'll the wait. game is, bro. Uh -huh. You can meet a bitch with six pack abs uh -huh. and still have a little baby mama shit on top of it. Yeah. That's where I've been. Abs with stretch moms. Look at me. You ain't been where I've been. I've been where you been, young nigga. You ain't seen what I done seen. I'm trying to get to where you been. You ever seen the clip with the dickhead on it? Oh. You ain't been out here long enough. Oh. I thought I was ready, but these you ain't ready the shit out of this shit I done seen. I, I ain't done ready. seen a pussy long look like some bat wings. Oh. What you done seen? Hey, young nigga, you ain't seen the shit that I done seen. Yeah. I done went over a bitch house. It was dirty, but it was clean. Yeah. Because <laughs> you ain't seen what I seen. I ain't seen nothing. You, you ever had seen. a young bitch who name was Irene? Uh huh. Nah, because you ain't seen what I seen. Uh huh. Yeah. You ain't seen what I seen. Yeah, you ain't seen what I seen. You ain't seen what I seen. I'm off the top like Tyson. Bitch pussy lips look like she fought Tyson. Big long, but I'ma still fuck strong. Mm -hmm. And that's the name of this song. You ain't seen what I seen. Y'all ain't seen what I seen, cause it ain't working yet. I might fuck a bitch all night off three percocets. And wake up in the morning and lick on her perky breasts. Let me stop playing. She give me turkey See, next. you ain't seen what I seen. <laughs> Uh-huh. You taking Percocets. When we was in the club, nigga was first stopping beans. That's Ooh. when they first hit the scene. Ooh. Cause you ain't seen what I seen. Uh. See, the young Ooh. niggas don't know that when you get my age, you uh -huh. ain't gonna remember shit you did when you was your age. Uh. Cause you ain't seen what I seen. You ain't, ain't seen, seen what I seen. And uh -huh. you ain't seen what I seen. You ain't seen what I seen. Taking perks, I can't go that route. If I took three perks, my dick is gonna cuss me out. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is you trying to do, nigga? You ain't seen what I, I seen. I don't really take no perks, yeah. but you said So, every time I go over a bitch house, it's nice, neat, and clean. I call my dick Codeine because when I hit her, she lean. And then she knows that Akeem is gonna probably break a spleen. I can do all type of things. What you mean? I ain't seen. So what that's you seen? cool. But see, the world got you fooled. Uh-huh. 
Mm-hmm. Young nigga. Uh-huh. And let me tell you how it is when you old. Yeah. Because the world gets colder. When I go to a bitch house, mm-hmm. she own the house. And if she get mad, she putting everybody out. Uh-huh. Grown woman yeah. shit. Two business. Okay. Good job. Okay. A lot of ends. Right now, no friends. We up in here on 85 South. I walk in a house full of bitches and I see 85 mouths wide open. Ready to catch everything that I'm about to throw to them. I walk out and I don't go to them. See, y'all ain't never seen the shit I seen because you ain't did the shit I did. I done played hide and seek and you ain't hid the places I hid. You feel what I'm saying? Can you get the shit I did? Can you do the shit I do? Can you fly the places I flew? See, young nigga, I'm about to tell you uh-huh. how life get hard. While hard. you was playing hide and seek, nigga, that was my yard. Uh-huh. Oh. Because you uh-huh. ain't seen what I seen. <laughs> oh, and you ain't God. seen what I seen. Okay, okay. And what you just seen? You, nigga. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something about your yard. I'm gonna tell you something about your yard. Okay, for the motherfuckers who know. Uh huh, uh huh. I whipped my wing wing out of seven and I was sliding up with it. Hunching on somebody's daughter playing hide and go get it. I ain't seen what you seen cause you was in the house on the couch while I was out here putting something in their mouth behind a tree, man. And I was in your yard. See, you see things, but you ain't never did the things I did, right? And you ain't okay. Okay. Right. Right. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no. go ahead, go ahead, do it. What you said, mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say that shit was fake, but while you hunching in the yard, where you think her mama at? Ah! Cause yeah. you ain't seen what I see. And you ain't seen what I see. Hey, hey I where you the... think her mama at? Uh-huh. You know what he seen? I'm in the back room fucking on Auntie Arlene. Yeah. Cause uh-huh. you ain't seen what he seen. Yeah. You ain't seen what he's seen. Hold up, I said your life is getting good, but my life is getting greater. Yeah. You ever fucked a bitch wearing a body shaper? Cause you ain't seen what I seen. No. He ain't seen no. what I seen. Listen. Now you said what was her mama. I was outside hunting her in her rumble. And the way y'all explaining this shit, I think y'all could be my uncles. So what was really going on inside that house, man? You don't hey. want to know, little bro. Cause hey, you uh, ain't seen what we seen. And we not going to miss. Your shit strong. But could you get your pussy with shit like this? Come on. And you, you ain't, ain't seen, seen what, what I seen. seen. No. Uh. I guess y'all niggas got me, man. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, Ever since you said it was your house, I was really kind of shook. I didn't know that was you looking out the window that was the whole me. time. That was me. We want you to man. win. That's why we ain't stopped See, you. See, young nigga, some uh-huh. old game what you need. When you own the property, they put your name on the deed. Yeah. My name is Carlos. I ain't got no sense. But we can stand right here. You can't see my fence. That's yeah. how much motherfucking land I own. Uh-huh. I'm so old school, got a landline phone. Uh-huh. And you can call the house. I'd be like, hold up. I'm going to take this shit down stairs because the house got three layers. You yeah. want to talk about some shit? Well, I'm a player. And yeah. I'll be there in the motherfucking dragon layer. And that's the part of the house that don't nobody know about. Uh, <laughs> OK. You feel yeah. me? I feel what you're saying. Come on, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, we didn't, I feel what you're saying. What what I say? The shit that you said? You know I'm an old nigga. What? Hey, we yeah. twisted this shit up. You heard what I said? Yeah. We said we was getting pussy, then we turned around and all said it. Let's just kill it, my nigga. Man, we should all did it. Cut the beat. <laughs> I told you, you ain't seen what well, we, we seen. seen. We but you're going to see, gonna see, see it. You're you know, going to see it. You know how much shit we had to do so mm-hmm. young niggas like you ain't have to do it? How much? We had to come, we had to come before you. 85 times. Yeah, and outside. lay the foundation so you can just walk over the stumbles that we done already made smooth exactly. for you. So now when I get to them bald-headed, they be like, I saw him, and I know why you're here. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. And you still going to be the coldest nigga in the world. Because of them. Them mm-hmm. Check out how the ecosystem works. Uh-huh. If it wasn't for niggas like me and Chico and niggas in our demographic coming through and leaving $50, $80. Talk to me, don't lie to me. They wouldn't already be fine when you run into them. Damn. We helping y'all. It's the niggas behind us. So now all I got to do is pay the 40. Sometimes you Sometimes you ain't even going to have to pay the 40. You just yeah. going to have to show up. Right. We made it so we, yeah, we done set it all the way up. So all Why you got to do is walk in and be the cool the nigga you is. talking shit like, my nigga got money. Who you think those niggas are? I'm just a substitute. I'm coming out the bench. Something to do. And you ain't even flinched. Come on, man. You just Hot. start fucking up. We Hot been fucking damn. Hot Nine, damn. 10, 11 years. You hear that, brother? <laughs> <laughs> These niggas had a first. I ain't want to ruin the young niggas' confidence, man. They had a first. This has been another pimped out, spaced out. You dig what we saying? Vibed out edition. They done put me on some pimp shit today. Uh, you understand what I'm saying, baby? Family. And y'all they make sure, sure y'all baby. support. Shout-out.
Akeem Ali, man, this is a superstar in appreciate the making. It, you heard it, it here first. This is a superstar, so don't be surprised. We tried to put you on early, but if you wait too late, you ain't going to be great.